Number 29, use the standard entropy data in Appendix G to determine the change in entropy for each of the following reactions. All the processes occur at the standard conditions and at 25 degrees Celsius. Okay, so we have the balanced equation. CaSO4 to H2O, so we got a hydrate here, uh, will yield CaSO4, calcium sulfate, plus two waters. So in this case, we just want to find that change in entropy. Keep in mind that the change in entropy, a change in anything is always a delta sign. That's the triangle. And entropy is an S value. So in this case, we're solving for a delta S. Now, since we're using those standard values in the back of a textbook, in this case, they're saying it's appendix G, but it could be a different appendix in your textbook, but it's always going to be in the back of that textbook. Since we're using standard values, we're solving for a standard change in entropy. So that's delta S notch. Anytime that you see this notch in the upper right hand corner, that means that it's under standard conditions. Keep in mind that entropy is just talking about the randomness or disorder of the system and what happens from initial to final. Now we can estimate what this delta S the standard you know, change in entropy would be by just looking at the states. Since we're starting with just a solid, and solids are, actually maybe I'll do it in a different color. Solids are very structured, right? We just have a solid, and we're going to something that is a solid, so we still have that structured component, but we're adding a gas. Remember, gases are the most random. They're the most chaotic. They got a lot of, they got a lot of problems. So gases are all over the place. And if you have gases, you increase in your randomness. So as you're going from something that's structured to something that, you know, definitely a gas, a lot of randomness going on here, we increased in our entropy, increased in randomness. So we can guesstimate that that delta S is going to be a positive value. Let's see if we're correct. Well, what I did for you guys is I went into the back of the textbook to find what those entropy values are. So for calcium sulfate dihydrate, the entropy value is 194.14 joules per mole times Kelvin. Calcium sulfate, 106.5 light FM. <laughs> Sorry, just sounded like a radio station. And H2O gas is 188.8. Make sure that you're, you know, don't get fooled by liquid and gas for H2O. This specifically wanted gas, so it's the different entropy value than a liquid. Now, what are we going to do with these values? Well, we're going to use the formula, which is this. When you want to find a change in entropy for the whole entire reaction, it's just the sum, that's this symbol, the sum, that just means addition. You're going to sum up all your products and subtract by the sum of all your reactants. So the question is, are these numbers going to be the same or are they going to be different? Well, that's where the balance equation comes in. Look at your coefficients. For your hydrate, you only had one entire hydrate. This too is not a coefficient for the hydrate. There's one whole entire hydrate. So in this case, I will take my value and times it by one, which is essentially the same number, right? Let's do the same for calcium sulfate. There's one CaSO4, so I'll take that number, times it by one. But for H2O, there's two of them, so I have to times this by two. Now we have to sum them up. Sum up all the reds, sum up all the blues. But one times 194.14 is 194.14. But now I'm going to go to Calci, and I have to figure out what the sum is here. It's CaSO4 literally plus H2O. So it'd be this value plus this value. So let's see. I'm going to say two times 188.8. And then I'm going to add that to the 106.5 light FM. <laughs> and I get 484.1. Okay. So... Use those values. Delta S for the whole entire reaction equals 484.1 minus the reactant, which was 194.14. Okay, we're getting closer. Delta S 
for the whole entire reaction is, I'm going to grab this value in the calci, I'm going to minus it from 194.14. And I get 289.96, but because of sig fig purposes, whoop, I don't want that, hold on, what happened there? There we go. Uh, you get 289.96, but since you have only one sig fig after the decimal, you're only allowed one sig fig after the decimal, so it would be 289 point, well, technically it would be 290.0, because that 6 brings the 9 up to a 10, 89 plus 1 is 90, and the units are joule per Kelvin. Keep in mind that the mole goes bye-bye because all of these numbers that you're multiplying by is the mole value. So if you have a mole on top times by a mole in the denominator, that gets canceled. So your unit is joule per Kelvin, and it's 290.0 joules per Kelvin, and we guessed correctly. We guessed that it was going to be a positive value, and it sure is, and that's all I got for you. What do you think? I really hope this helped. Let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Love talking to you guys. I hope you guys are having a great day. Keep studying hard, and I will talk to you later. Bye-bye.